So we, we live in a, in a society where we have been programmed to eat three times a day. And so, you know, you're exactly right that we have this mindset that if we don't eat, somehow something negative is going to happen. Welcome to the Mastering Diabetes audio experience, where we'll teach you how to reverse insulin resistance, achieve your ideal body weight, gain energy, and get your best A1C following almost 100 years of evidence-based research. We're on a bold mission to reverse insulin resistance in 1 million people. We're glad to have you joining us. Welcome to the Mastering Diabetes audio experience. Today we have a very special guest, Dr. Scott Stoll. He is a wealth of knowledge on a wide range of topics, but today we are focusing on fasting. And if you're not familiar with extended water fasts, you're in for a treat today. Now, Dr. Scott Stoll is recognized as an international leader in lifestyle medicine and whole food plant-based nutrition. He's the co-founder of the Plantrition Project, the International Plant-Based Nutrition Healthcare Conference, which I have been fortunate enough to attend from the beginning. I think I missed the first one, but I have been to all of them, and they are truly, that conference is truly one of the best conferences in the world on nutrition. So if you're a healthcare provider um, or you're just curious about uh, learning more from the leaders in this field, I cannot recommend that conference enough. We'll put a link below this show so you can learn more. All right. He is also the co-founder of the International Journal of Disease Reversal and Prevention and the Regenerative Health Institute, a unique collaboration project with the Rodale Institute that integrates a regenerative vision of human health, agriculture, and the environment. Every year, Dr. Stoll hosts the very popular one-week total health immersion in Florida and helps attendees recover lost health, overcome addictions, and restore emotional balance. In addition to authoring several books and numerous scientific studies, Dr. Stoll has appeared on a wide variety of national shows, including The Dr. Oz Show, hosting a 2018 PBS special, Food as Medicine, and numerous documentaries, including Eating You Live, Wait Till It's Free, and The Game Changers, as well as being a published author and member of the 1994 Olympic bobsled team. He's a highly sought-after international speaker. Dr. Stoll and his family live in Franklin, Tennessee. So in today's episode, you're going to learn about several different types of fasts and which type in particular Dr. Stoll recommends you avoid. You're going to learn about the different stages of an extended water fast and how to complete such a fast safely and also how to eat after fasting. You will also learn the scientific benefits of not eating late at night and a heck of a lot more. So this is a jam-packed show and what we talk about today is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to fasting. And Dr. Stoll is part of an event on June 19th titled Fasting for Disease Reversal and Longevity. This is a virtual event, and you can earn up to eight CMEs. So I cannot recommend this enough. It's a series that's being put on by the Plantrition Education Series. And there are other experts, including Dr. Walter Longo, Dr. Alan Goldhammer, and Dr. Michael Clapper. So... We will have a link below wherever you're listening to this. You can go and learn more. But again, it's a virtual event. You can attend no matter where you live in the world. It's on June 19th, and you will get to learn from all these experts. You can also access the recording. So I can't recommend it enough. This is such an important topic. It's really an honor to be able to conduct interviews like this and be bringing this information out to as many people as possible. So thank you for listening. Share this information with anybody you think who will benefit. This is really powerful stuff, and um, oftentimes people who might feel like they're just a lost cause or um, there's nothing they can do, water fasting can be a huge, huge benefit. So listen carefully and share this with as many people as possible. All right. Enjoy the show. Dr. Stoll, it is so great to have you on the podcast. How are you doing today? Hey, thanks, Ravi. I'm so delighted to be here. Thank you so much for the invitation. Absolutely. I'm telling you, I'm pretty sure everybody in our entire field will agree you are just one of the kindest human beings on the planet, and I I miss you so much. I miss seeing you at the conferences, and I can't wait for them to come back soon. 
Oh, I think we're all that way, Robbie. I, I cannot wait to see you all and Cyrus in person and, and everyone again and share a good meal around table with some laughter. I am really looking forward to that. It's been too long, hasn't it? It's been way too long. When is the next Plantrition Conference? So this year we're actually doing virtual conference um, one more year, uh, and that's September 24th through the 29th. It'll be virtual, but uh, 2022, September 2022, will be live again. Uh, Palm Springs. So that will be a great Excellent. celebration. Wonderful. I, I can't wait. And uh, I think you recently moved, right? Yeah, we did. We did. We made a big move during COVID. If we didn't have enough change already, we decided to make one more change in our lives. And so we moved from Pennsylvania to just outside Nashville. And uh, it's been a great move for us. We, we love the area. We have this amazing farmer's market that's open 52 weeks a year with local organic farmers. We go every single Saturday morning. We load up on all kinds of delicious greens and produce. And it's been, it's been an awesome part of our, our new life here in Tennessee. Okay, you sold me. I'll, I'll be there next week. I'll, I'll see you on Saturday. <laughs> oh, that's, that's great. great. Okay, well, let's get into our topic today, which is the opposite of going and uh, buying fruits and vegetables at the farmer's market. We're going to talk all about fasting. So I know there are a lot of different ways to you know, fast. So maybe just break it down a little bit. What are the most common types of fasts that people can do? Yes, yeah, so when we think about fasting, the easiest way to think about it is just calorie restriction. And so as we restrict calories, by whatever means, you know, eating less intermittent fasting or water only fasting, as we restrict calories, it has positive impacts on the body. So there are kind of two categories that, you know, we'll talk about maybe today. One is the idea of intermittent fasting, where we are compressing the number of calories that we eat, which kind of necessarily reduces total calorie intake into a fixed period of time. And then there's a longer period of time during the day when we're not eating. And then there's also water only fasting, which is a powerful intervention for more serious diseases. And that is, you know, a season of time from one day to sometimes even 30 days of only consuming water for that, that period of time. Um, and it's during that, you know, more intensive calorie restriction that the body has an opportunity to heal. Okay. Yeah, right. So those are the two big ones we're going to talk about today. But one couple, I'd just like to address a few myths, if, if you will. Um, yeah. What about the idea of dry fasting? Is that something you'd ever recommend? Yeah, you know, uh, I've done a lot of fasting in my life, Robbie. Um, and I even did one time and I, I, it was really hard. I did a three day, no water, no food um, fast. And uh, I just did it because, you know, it's one of those things that you hear out there and it was extremely hard. I would not recommend that. I don't think there's any inherent benefit uh, uh, health wise doing that. And um, in situations like that, you can actually hurt yourself. So, you know, if we're looking at a, a fast from the standpoint or the perspective of actually trying to do something beneficial to your body and give it an opportunity to heal, we don't want to inflict unnecessary stress or damage during that fast. And, you know, dry fasting when you don't drink any water at all can be very difficult and even harmful in some cases. Okay, how about juice fasting? Yeah, so juice fasting has been around a long time. And, uh, you know, juice fasting, uh, it, it can be a good intervention. Now, what's interesting about juice fasting, it all depends on what you put in your juice, right? So you can actually end up juice fasting and consuming, um, you know, up to, you know, 1,500, 200, 2,000 calories in a day with high fruit juices and eating uh, and drinking and consuming a lot of these fruit juices. And you really don't get the benefits of a juice fast and you may actually end up doing yourself harm by drinking too many juices. The real concept of a juice fast is again, calorie restriction and exposure to uh, you know, high density greens. And so you're simply flavoring your, your juice with enough fruit to make it palatable and drinking, a, you know, few enough that you're probably down in the 500 calorie range where you actually are getting the benefits of going into ketosis and fasting. And so, um, you know, juice fast is, it has to be done the right way. It has to be balanced. And, um, you know, it's always from the mindset you're trying to flood your body with lots of phytochemicals and antioxidants 
from high volumes of fruits and vegetables that you might not consume uh, if you were eating them with a fork um, during the day. I'm glad we're talking about this because we receive a lot of questions about juice in general for people living with diabetes and they're concerned, you know, hey, is juice okay? Can I have orange juice? Can I have pomegranate juice? And people are oftentimes confused and we made it very clear in our book, in our experience, just kind of like what you were saying here, is focusing on juices made of greens, um, you know, or like, so that's lettuce, it could be chard, could be collard greens or celery. Juices like that, maybe you put in some lemon or something or a little bit of orange, just give it a little flavor. That's not going to have a dramatic impact on somebody's blood glucose levels. And, you know, whether you're, if you're non insulin dependent, you can probably get away with it and it could be beneficial. If you are insulin dependent, you might need to use a small amount of insulin, but um, it's different when you're juicing carrots and beets and apples and having just straight up, you know, you remove the fiber it's, and it's very challenging for blood glucose management. So I'm glad to hear yeah. you talk about that. But you mentioned that you have done a lot of fasts. Can you maybe share your experience with fasting? Yeah, you know, through the last uh, 18 years of like, you know, engaging in health and always wanting to try and do better. You know, my personal philosophy is always the, you know, continuous improvement, you know, getting better 1% at a time. So as we, you know, as I read about these things, uh, you know, part of, you know, um, I think my responsibility as a clinician is to, you know, engage in some of these uh, opportunities for fasting so that I know what it's like. And when I recommend it or when I'm talking to somebody that's actually doing it, I've had firsthand experience. And so, uh, yeah, I've done, I've done water fasting. I've done uh, two week water fasts, which, you know, by the end of two weeks, I actually found it very difficult to work. So I, I understand the limitations <laughs> of water fasting. Uh, I've done a three week uh, smoothie fast, which was, was really amazing. I've done a number of juice fasts. I've done it the wrong way. I've done it the right way. Uh, so I've learned. Uh, <laughs> I did, like I said, the three day, no water, uh, no food fast, which I would not recommend. It was my wife and I still say it's the hardest fast that we've ever done in our entire lives, that three days. And I'll tell you, water never tasted so good as at the end of that third day. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I've tried a lot of things and I, I really found that, you know, as a clinician, it, it benefited me because, you know, if I was talking to somebody, I could give them firsthand of experience. I knew what they were thinking. I knew what they were going through. I understood how you, you, you know, dream about food and may have cravings around food. Um, so, you know, it was really, really beneficial for me, uh, to know, uh, you know, what my patients were actually going to be experiencing and, and to give them a heads up before they went into a fast and also to experience the benefits of fasting physically and just to see how my own body responds to a fast. Um, I also should add, you know, I, I still practice intermittent fasting, trying to compress my calories, you know, with a late breakfast and early dinner. So that's still a part of my life as well. I'm curious, what benefits did you experience? Yeah, so, you know, what's interesting to me, Robbie, is that, um, and I, you know, this always is, is curious about like a whole food plant-based diet, and it just tells me there's more, more to it. You know, I eat a really healthy diet. I've always been focused on whole foods. I eat very few, um, you know, ever, if ever, processed foods. My only weakness is chips and salsa. You know, I'll admit that on this podcast. That that's, my, <laughs> that's my kryptonite, good chip and salsa. Um, but, you know, other than that, it's oh, we're like whole food plant based here in our house, See, no sugar, no oil. Uh, but, you know, when I do a fast, I see like uh, an increase in my energy. I wake up earlier, like when I did a two week water fast, I was waking up at four o'clock in the morning, full of energy, amazing mental clarity, high productivity, especially in the first week. Um, you know, you, you feel like a noticeable reduction in inflammation. Um, you know, some of those old sports injuries that I have, you know, I notice that they get better during a fast and it's cumulative over time. The more I fast, the better those, those injuries seem to get. Um, you know, you just notice that like your gut is feeling better. You feel like the whole system has an opportunity to reboot. Um, I, so, you know, so many benefits, your skin, you know, glows even more than on a whole food plant-based diet. So uh, a lot of like both outward and inward differences that you can experience during a fast. And I've done it so many times and I try to be, you know, fairly objective about this, that 
I really notice those those benefits. Okay, well, with that list of benefits from somebody who is already eating a very, very clean diet and very active and very fit, I think you have our audience intrigued. So let's talk about this idea of an extended water fast. How does that work? How do you do that safely? What are the benefits? Some people might be listening and being like, how is that even possible? How can I not eat food, zero food for 48 hours, like 72 hours? Like what is going on? Can you just give us a general overview of extended water fasting? Yeah, yeah absolutely. And I think you're starting in the right place with that comment that, you know, for most of us growing up in Western society where we are so acclimated and, um, and so habituated around eating three meals a day that, you know, even skipping a meal, our minds begin to panic that, you know, I don't have lunch. What am I going to do? If we're traveling, we have to stop and eat lunch because it's lunchtime. So we, we live in a, in a society where we have been programmed to eat three times a day. And so, you know, you're exactly right that we have this mindset that if we don't eat, somehow something negative is going to happen. And part of that negative mindset is that I'm not going to have enough energy. I'm going to feel weak. Um, and, you know, part of that weakness and lack of energy is actually, as, as you guys have talked about a lot on here, is just detox and withdrawal from sugar, fat and salt. And so, you know, it's, it is understandable and you may actually feel weak if you skip a meal. But it's not because your body needs the calories. It's actually because of the detoxification and the withdrawal from processed foods, sugar, fat, and salt, um, which we'll talk about. We'll put that on the shelf for a minute. We'll come back to that. So, you know, I think stepping into a fast, we have to just understand that there's a, a mindset that we have all grown up with, uh, and that is that we have to eat three times a day, and that if we don't eat three times a day, we're not going to have enough calories. We may not get enough protein. Our body will not have enough energy. And so, you know, the first step into a fast is to understand that's a mindset that's not true. It's been programmed by our society and to remove that mindset and put it on the shelf and to put on this new mindset that your body can actually go for 30 days without food. You can live for 30 days without food and actually do fairly well. By the end of a 30 day fast, you may not have as much energy, but you can actually live for 30 days without food. And that is a huge stretch for most people because, you know, even when I heard that, when I started fasting in the beginning, to me, it seemed beyond comprehension, beyond reality that, you know, that's like <laughs> Superman stuff. Totally. That you can 30 days without <laughs> right. food, it seems totally impossible. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, fasting right. has been a part of every culture throughout history, whether it's, you know, most of the time it's been around religious fasts. Uh, Ramadan just finished. And, um, you know, that's a, there are huge studies around the Ramadan fast where they don't eat during from uh, sunrise to sunset. But almost every culture has utilized fasting in some way uh, and some for extended periods of time with, you know, um, benefits for the community. But, you know, the secondhand benefits of the body fasting and the health is, is tremendous. And so, you know, as we get out of the mindset, put on this new mindset, fasting is possible. Um, then we just have to say, you know, well, Water only fasting, you know, how do I start? Why should I start? What are the benefits? Um, water only fasting, and um, you know, I, I recommend water only fasting only after you've been on a healthy diet for at least six months. You've gone through some of the detox, the withdrawal symptoms, you've gotten some of your cravings under control, your body's had a chance to begin recovering, you've gained a little bit of self-discipline, uh, and then the easiest way to step into a water only fast is just to do 24 hours you know, to uh, finish with dinner, fast during the day and eat dinner the next day and just do water during that day. That's a very easy uh, first step into water only fasting. And one of the keys with water only fasting, as I'm saying that is uh, drink a lot of water. You know, as you drink water, it suppresses right, right. hunger during the day. So drinking lots of water really makes the fast very doable. Uh, and it's a tremendous opportunity, you know, uh, to step into something for 24 hours and to test it and see how your body responds. And it's also a really unique opportunity to just step out of eating and see what you think about. And, uh, you know, that's one of the, I think, one of the great benefits of fasting is when you stop uh, putting food in your mouth and you stop the process of thinking about food and preparing food, you realize pretty quickly how often you think about food and uh, how often you might reach to put something in your mouth. 
And so it's a really valuable training ground for all of us to just pull back from the, the mindless eating, the um, maybe the stress eating, the anxiety, those times when you walk by and you just even grab a date or a handful of nuts and you don't even think about it. But you know, for all of us that even are healthy, by just taking a day and not eating, it, it really makes all of those habits very visible for us. And it gives us a, a great insight into what we're thinking, why we're eating, maybe emotions that we weren't aware of that are driving eating, and uh, how we can begin making some of those changes. Yeah, the, the mindset component of fasting is such a big deal, and I think a lot of people might not really focus on that. They focus on the physical benefits. Um, but one thing I just want to clarify, which was, I think, super important, this idea of doing a 24-hour fast is something we highly recommend. It's part of our you know, basal rate testing for people living with insulin-dependent diabetes, um, and it's just very important. Now, for anybody listening, you know, we're going to now go into a little more about this, these extended fasts, because I really want to get into this. It's a very um, unique, interesting topic. And we have touched about this recently. We had Dr. Gershfeld on the podcast. We've talked to Alan Goldhammer before. Um, but for a lot of listeners, this could still be brand new. But again, I just want to clarify, if you're living with insulin-dependent diabetes, so Cyrus, myself, a lot of our fellow type 1s, type 1.5s, or insulin-dependent type 2 um, individuals, we do not recommend doing a water-only fast for more than 24 hours. Um, so that's kind of like standard and... Um, I'm sure you, that's, you recommend the same thing, Dr. Stoll. That's exactly but, right. Um, yeah. So, but again, this, it gets fascinating. So I did an internship um, in Costa Rica many years ago. It was actually 2008. And there was about 10 or so people. And I, was, I watched them go through a 28-day water fast. This whole group, they sort of did it together. And it's just, it's fascinating. So, um, can you talk to us more about like what does that process look like? How, how do how do people like make it that far? What do they do? I mean, do you recommend they stop working? Have to take time off? Um, like, how, how does that just how does that go down? Yeah, that's that's an important question, and you know, the length of your fast really dictates um, your activity levels. If like you saw, if you're doing a 28 day fast you really do need to take time off. Um, your body will need yes. more rest. You will not have as much energy. You may get lightheaded with a, you know, vigorous activity after the 10th day, 14th day. So it is important to be able to pull back if you're gonna do a longer fast. Uh, <clears throat> you know, the process of, of starting a fast and then going through a longer fast, you know, is really uh, understanding kind of the stages of fasting and what's happening during those stages Typically in the first three days, you know, uh, your body is beginning to shift over from a normal metabolism into uh, using ketones, ketosis. Um, and so as your body shifts into this ketosis, you're, it starts to utilize fat as its primary source because it's not getting glucose as the primary fuel for the body. So during that, that first three days, you may experience uh, some fatigue, your body can also undergo some withdrawal and detoxification. If you've been, you know, using sugar, fat, and salt as a part of your diet, if you've been on animal products, you will experience some withdrawal from those, those foods. Um, and depending on your physical condition, as your body starts chewing up fat, we store all of our toxins in our fat. And so you can have some of this, this heavier toxin load that enters your bloodstream, especially in the early part of a fast, that your body has to... Um, to detoxify and remove. And so it's not uncommon in the first three to four days to go through some detoxification, some food withdrawal, some fatigue, some headaches, some challenges. And so, you know, it's important to understand this as a part of the early fast because oftentimes people will start, you know, they'll get beyond 24 hours into the 48 hour, 96 hour time frame. They start to feel bad and have headaches and they think to themselves, I can't do this, this is not for me, my body does not respond to fasts, I need more calories, I must be protein deficient, you know, all of the, the, common, um, uh, the common pushbacks to fasting, but you know, what they don't realize is they're just on the cusp of getting into a really sweet spot, a sweet spot in fasting, where your body shifts into kind of a ketosis metabolism, you gain more energy, your body starts to heal and detoxify, and you really move forward, you know, after about day four, 
um, you know, all the way into day 10 where you have like really vibrant energy. And so just getting through the first three days and understanding that it can be a challenge and that your body is just um, working out some of those challenges is really, really critical. In that second, like four to 10 day uh, season, um, it's, a, it's a wonderful season. You know, when we remove food from our lives, um, we free up our metabolism and our body's um, systems to begin healing itself. More than 50% of our daily metabolic workload is involved in processing food. And so by freeing up that metabolic workload, uh, our cells can begin paying attention to parts of the body that have been damaged, damaged through dietary indiscretions, through environmental exposures, through inactivity and stress. You know, your body will pay attention, even old injuries. It's not uncommon for someone during a longer fast that's had a knee injury or an ankle injury to experience pain in that area of their body because their, their immune system is now paying attention to that part of their body and the macrophages are chewing up the damaged tissue and their body's beginning to lay down new collagen and new tissue, including the arteries. Um, it's also a really important time because, you know, food is a challenge to our immune system. Uh, it's an outside coming inside and it comes with lots of other things. And so our immune system is always heightened while we're eating. But during a fast, our immune system can be more quiet. It's, it's uh, at rest. And so those people with autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis and lupus and psoriasis, their immune system can really scale back in all those parts of their body that are being attacked by their immune system, whether it's the skin, the lungs, um, <clears throat> the kidneys, they can actually begin to heal because they don't have that constant uh, barrage of immune system uh, attacking. So it's an, a beautiful opportunity for the, especially people with autoimmune diseases, to see a significant reduction in pain and inflammation and the immune system to begin resetting itself. And then when we get beyond two weeks, you know, that's when uh, the body can really see um, dramatic healing. Uh, Dr. Alan Goldhammer, uh, who's going to be a part of our upcoming conference on June 19th on fasting, has uh, published in um, lots of amazing uh, peer-reviewed scientific journals uh, incredible case reports and um, and uh, cohort studies showing uh, you know amazing reversal of disease with longer fast that 14 to 30 day range when the body actually begins reversing disease. He's even um, you know published uh, long term case trials of people with tumors that have undergone an extensive fast and have seen their tumors completely chewed up and removed. Uh, and have, you know, they've been in remission for years after a long fast. So that 14 to 30 day phase is when people can experience traumatic healing in their body and reversal of disease. I'm so glad you brought all that up because extended water fasting is really one of the most profound medical interventions, if you even want to call it a medical intervention, I've ever come across. I mean, the, the stories are just incredible. And oftentimes people who end up trying that approach are at a last ditch effort anyways, um, that they finally found out about it. And um, I'm just glad you brought that up. So another important point here, I think, is that you just brought up Dr. Alan Goldhammer from True North, which is ex doing an extended water fast must be done under the supervision of a expert who's done this before. What do you think is the longest fast somebody would safely do at home on their own? Yeah, you know, I think um, it, it's qualified based upon the person's health. If you have hypertension, uh, like you said, you know, uh, if you are just non-insulin dependent uh, person living with diabetes, um, you know, you should not fast for more than a couple of days. Uh, because your blood sugars can plummet dramatically, you know, even within 24 hours. So anybody with hypertension, um, type 2 diabetes, uh, as you said earlier, people living with uh, type 1 diabetes should never fast. Um, but those, those conditions where you're on medications, you need to be under the, um, under the, uh, the oversight of a physician who's following up with you on an almost daily basis to make adjustments to medications because it works that quickly. Your body, you know, gets well that quickly that you'll need to make those adjustments. 
if you're healthy, um, you know, like myself uh, and my wife, you can do, you know, I would say five to seven day water only fast at home. Um, but if you're going to go longer than a week, I really do recommend that you have some professional uh, oversight, somebody helping you through those next, um, that seven to 14 or longer water fast. And if you're going to go beyond two weeks, you really do need to be in a place like True North, a fasting clinic, where they can check in on you every day. Um, and they may actually step in at some point and say, listen, you know, it's, you've done a great job, but we need to stop fasting now and transition to a diet because there are those, those lines that, um, you know, can be crossed. And I, I have friends that have you know, done long fasts uh, in the past and they actually fasted too long and they ended up injuring themselves in the process. So, you know, it, it is something that does need some professional guidance and, and should not be taken on uh, lightly. Yeah, the, the wealth of knowledge and experience that, you know, somebody like Dr. Alan Goldham and his team have is, is just is priceless. Now, one thing I think that people don't focus on enough or pay attention to is the refeeding process after an extended water fast. So can you speak to the importance of that and, and you know, your experience and insights into like, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, that is exactly right, Robbie. You know, we can talk about fasting, but the most important thing uh, about fasting is what you put in your mouth after the fast. You know, there are lots of, of um, stories of people that went through long fasts, had significant healing, went back to a normal westernized diet and their disease came back. I had a number of patients that did this that I worked with and they went through long fast. They did incredibly well, but they went back and they did not realize the power of food. They started, you know, adding back in small amounts of sugar, fat and salt, a little bit of ice cream here and there. And before they knew it, right back down the road of the Western diet and their diseases came back. And so the refeeding process is is absolutely critical and you know i always think about it after i've gone through a fast personally you know i have just like cleaned my body out it's just like i took an amazing shower and just cleaned everything up you know i don't want to put anything dirty back in and so i am looking to you know i, I just picture my cells are waiting with open hands to receive this amazing gift of food to really nourish and finish the healing process and so I, I'm very intentional and conscientious about what I put back into my mouth after a fast. Um, after a long fast, it's important to remember that your, your gastrointestinal system has been at rest for a week, two weeks, or if it's a really long fast, it's been at rest for a month. And so the stomach is small, uh, all the enzymes have been down-regulated, and so we need to start slowly and let the system reboot so that we don't injure it in the process. Um, you know, right after a fast, like some easy things to add back in are melon, uh, honeydew melon, some uh, cantaloupe, a uh, small amount of blueberries, you know, just enough, uh, a little bit of um, vegetable broth, uh, you know, just small amounts of, of something to just get the system warmed up for the first 24 hours. Uh, and then after that, add, add back in, you know, more um, uh, raw fruits, raw vegetables, even a vegetable juice to help the body start getting, getting itself ramped up over day two and day three. Uh, but after day three, you know, this is a perfect opportunity to increase the uh, exposure to raw fruits and vegetables and to really, you know, take your diet to the next level after a fast. You've just done such an incredible job of pushing back, you know, the intrusion of westernized food that's always knocking at our door. You have overcome cravings. You've cleansed your body. You've reduced inflammation. You've, you know, charged up your immune system. Now you can really boost your, your life by getting back onto, a, um, you know, an even better whole food plant-based diet after, uh, after a really good fast. I love that. It's just a, a big, uh, like the momentum is going. It's like, keep it rolling. You know, let's, let's go. Um, now, there is so much more to talk about when it comes to extended water fast. And I just want to take a little commercial break here to remind people about your event that's coming up. So this event is on June 19th. And how can people register and attend this? 
Yeah, thank you, Robbie. We, uh, as a part of the Plan Nutrition Project, which is our 501c3 not-for-profit designed to, you know, really equip, empower, inspire, you know, healthcare professionals uh, and the general public even with information they need to take back their health through a whole food plant-based diet. <clears throat> we recognize that this area of fasting is really uh, important and there are so many questions around it. So we gathered together some of the top experts in fasting for a one-day online conference um, and you can find that information at plantritionproject.org under events. You'll see the fasting conference. <clears throat> but we brought together Dr. Alan Goldhammer, as you mentioned, with the True North Clinic. They've had 35 years of experience in water only fasting, uh, and they're the leading publisher of research around water only fasting. We also invited his um, uh, head of research, Dr. Tasha Myers who's amazing and uh, has probably the greatest comprehension of the fasting literature of anyone that I know. We invited Dr. Michael Clapper, who spent uh, decades at True North working with patients uh, who are you know, going through a fast. And uh, as far as I know, he's probably one of the most um, experienced clinicians in managing fasts. And then we also invited Dr. Walter Longo, who has done uh, extensive research and, and one of the you know, uh, most important names globally in intermittent fasting. And then uh, Dr. Sachin Panda, who is a professor at Salk Institute. And uh, Dr. Panda has done some really fascinating research on chronobiology and how the timing of our food and even the timing of a fast can dramatically impact our body and our health. And so this is a one day conference. It's going to be really amazing. We also have a two hour uh, Q&A panel at the end of the conference, which is really fun to interact with all of these uh, these experts. It's wonderful. And I believe uh, health professionals can get continuing education credits. Is that correct? That's right, Robbie. Thank you. Yes, it's uh, CME certified. And so eight hours of CME for um, healthcare professionals, um, which is great. And uh, it'll also be recorded Wonderful. so anybody that, that attends can watch those uh, lectures at a later date as well. Okay, that's fantastic. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about intermittent fasting, which you just touched on with the two professionals you have. Um, and this is more of like calorie, you're still eating, but you're calorie restricting and experiencing some benefits. So talk to us a little bit about that. And we definitely want to hear more about that chronobiology, um, all that fancy science. Yeah. And you know, it's so interesting, you know, we'll get into some of the fancy science, but you know, um, what's, uh, what's so interesting when you look really at what we're recommending, it's a simple recommendation. You know, it's, you're eating more of your, your food in the morning. Uh, you're stopping eating at, at night and you that's, that's the essence of all of the science that we're going to talk about. You know, it's, it's, it's very simple. <laughs> You know, I love Sir Richard Branson, who's an amazing entrepreneur. Uh, you know, he always approaches a problem and he sees a simple solution. Then he dives in and, and digs out the complexity of, you know, all understanding that simple solution so that he can create uh, something that is achievable for people, you know, an easy interface. <clears throat> and so that's what we're trying to do here. We're going to talk a lot about some of the, the amazing science around intermittent fasting and chronobiology and all these big words. But ultimately, it is, you know, uh, eating a little bit later in the morning, stopping eating by early dinner. And that's it. That's the solution. So intermittent fasting, Dr. Walter Longo and others have discovered this incredible, um, you know, uh, complexity of biochemistry all the way down to our you know, our epigenome and our chromosomes that are impacted by the timing of our food. And so they discovered that if somebody um, will eat their calories, you know, in a, uh, a window that's either 12 hours or eight hours, some even, you know, whittle that window down to a four hour window during the day um, with a longer period of time not eating uh, after that, that last meal until the next meal, it, again, it's like the, what we talked about with water-only fasting. It gives the body an opportunity to process the food, to begin healing itself, uh, and to regulate other system processes rather than this you know, constant barrage of digestive effort and metabolic effort to process food, to package food, and to send food to different parts of the body. 
Um, Dr. Longo discovered in mice that intermittent fasting extends life. And still today, you know, it's the only studied lifestyle intervention that has been shown to create longevity is through uh, intermittent fasting and fasting. Um, we know through you know, other lifestyle intervention research, but especially through the intermittent fasting, that when we do this, there are little um, caps on our chromosomes called telomeres. It's like the plastic cap on your shoelace. And they found that with intermittent fasting, that little cap gets longer. And that's interesting because when we have diseases, when we have chronic inflammation, depression, and even poor lifestyle, those caps shorten over time and it's, uh, it's related to or associated to a shorter lifespan and more um, lifestyle-related diseases. So the intermittent fasting impacts the chromosomes, it reduces inflammation, it reduces blood pressure, it reduces cholesterol levels. They have even found that by you know, shifting more of your calories to up front in the day, your body automatically reduces its cholesterol production. Uh, and it's not uncommon by just shifting calories to the front end of the day and not eating after dinner to have a 20 point reduction in your cholesterol by, by this intermittent fasting. Um, they also found, which is also you know, interesting, that Powerful. even a 24 hour fast turns off cholesterol production by 95%. So it's an incredible way wow. to like, you know, bring your cholesterol levels down naturally by just changing the timing of our eating. Uh, we see amazing, you know, uh, when you change the timing of your eating and you're eating in a smaller window, um, it changes the even the number of calories that your body absorbs during that time. It's like your body recognizes that it doesn't need as many calories and it pushes calories along through the digestive system that don't even get absorbed into your body. So it's not even like calories in that calories become a part of our body. The body is uh, kind of in, in an intelligent way regulating the number of calories, which directly will impact blood sugar levels as well. Now, that topic is fascinating, Dr. So I feel like we could do an entire episode on that. But in general, I love what you're saying about how there is this extensive science showing these amazing benefits, but also you just started out by saying how basically logical and simple this is. <laughs> um, just you know, and it's amazing how so often that happens in the world of health. But let's give our audience some practical tips here of exactly how they can get started. How do you suggest if somebody has not implemented intermittent fasting in their life yet, what is the best way to get started? Yeah, you know, I've learned through the years that uh, anytime that we're trying to make a change, you just keep it simple and start with a simple, achievable first step. So the first step for anybody that's never done fasting is just don't eat after dinner. That's like the easiest way to get started on this whole intermittent fasting route. You know, we have breakfast, we can have lunch, we can have dinner. If you just make dinner your last, the last thing you put in your mouth is the last bite of food on your dinner plate. Then you have a cup of tea, brush your teeth, and don't eat till breakfast. You've already started intermittent fasting because for most of us, that's going to be, you know, almost 12 hours before we eat again. And so you have created like almost a 12-12 intermittent fasting routine by simply not eating after dinner. That's the easiest, most practical way to start. You know, from there, you can tighten it up a little bit more by, you know, pushing your breakfast a little bit later and getting to maybe a 16-8 window, which has a little bit more benefit, 16 hours off, 8 hours on. But the simplest way is just don't eat after dinner. That has so many benefits. Um, and that's the easiest way to start. And after dinner, just drink some water, have a cup of tea. I like to brush my teeth after dinner. That's, that always helps me uh, know <laughs> that I, I finished eating. I, my teeth are clean. I flossed and brushed, and I'm just going to wait till morning to eat again. Okay, I love this suggestion so much, and I want to throw in just a little bit of a pro tip for anybody who is using fast-acting insulin, okay, again, that could be type 1, type 1.5, type 2 insulin dependent, if you can accomplish exactly what Dr. Stoll just said, this is a huge, huge benefit to help you improve your blood glucose control while you're sleeping. And if you want to improve your A1C, you want to improve your time and range, if you can make an impact on that, that sleep, the sleeping number, the blood glucose control while you're sleeping, that's like a third of your day, you can have a huge impact. So 
if you are using fast acting insulin at your dinner meal, dose conservatively. If you take a s less than you think, so you're gonna ride a little bit high. You're like, I'm gonna do everything I can to make sure I don't take too much insulin. That will then allow you to do what Dr. Skoll just said. You can brush your teeth, because you'll be very confident you're probably not gonna need a snack. You're not gonna need to treat a low. And you might need a tiny, tiny correction before going to bed, or no correction at all, and then you go into bed just cruising, all right? You have, you have this stable reading. You haven't taken fast-acting insulin for, you know, four or five hours, depending on what time you go to bed. That's going to help you keep your blood glucose more stable overnight. Anytime you have a late-night snack and you have to inject fast-acting insulin, that makes your blood glucose control while sleeping just twice as difficult. You know, you, the more you can avoid that, it's better for a lot of reasons, including all the benefits that Dr. Stoll just taught us today about fasting in general. So thank you for that tip. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. It's amazing how those solutions are, are simple and almost universal, right? Totally. Absolutely. Okay, well, Dr. Stoll, thank you so much for your time. You are a wealth of knowledge, and I just can't thank you enough for all the work you're doing for the whole approach of getting food as medicine out to more people. And I wish everybody could have you as your doctor, as their doctor, because you are just so kind, so knowledgeable. Um, so hopefully we can find a way to clone you and get more lifestyle medicine doctors just like you out there. Uh, thank you, Robbie. I just want to thank you for the opportunity to spend the day with you and with all of your, um, your amazing people that are part of your program. And I just want to congratulate you and Cyrus for all of the work that you did and the sacrifices that you made to create Mastering Diabetes because you have changed so many lives and you will continue to change more lives. So um, I just, uh, I really wanna appreciate you for all of that. You've done an amazing job, you're great educators and uh, it's your kindness and compassion that drive you as well and I just wanna recognize that. So thank you for the invitation for allowing me to be with you.